Hi. Now, in this question on polar coordinates, we're told that we've got this curve C, which has polar equation r equals 1 plus 2 cos theta. For theta, greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to pi upon 2 radians. And at the point P on C, the tangent to C is parallel to the initial line. Given that O is the pole, find the exact length of the line OP. So if you'd like to have a go at this, if you haven't done so already, as usual, give you time to pause the video, do come back when ready, and you can either fast forward to the end to check the answer, or you can uh, just work with me as I go through the solution. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So, first of all, what I'd want to do here is to just, just do a sketch, okay, of what we've got. We've got our initial line, let's say we just put it down here. The initial line, remember, is where your angle, theta, equals zero, zero radians. Then we've got, say, a line through here, and we've got our pole, which is O, okay, given that O is the pole. Now, if I was to sketch this curve for theta between naught and pi upon two radians, when theta equals zero, you're going to get cosine of theta, or cosine of zero, I should say, would be one, and so this is going to be one plus two, which is three. So you're going to start out here, say, let's just mark that in as three. And when theta equals pi upon 2 radians, we've got the cosine of pi upon 2 is 0, so r is just going to be 1. So if we mark that in as 1 when we get there, then what you've got is a curve looking something like this. Okay, now the point where we've got the tangent is parallel to the initial line on this curve is going to be the point P, which we're going to say is there, okay, because the tangent to the initial line will be like so. So how do we get this length from O to P? Well, what we should know is that if we were to draw a triangle in here, and this, say, is our angle theta, let's just mark that in as theta, then this value here, let's call it y, y is equal to r sine theta. So if we just put down here that y equals r sine theta. Now if we're looking for where the tangent here to the curve c, we'll mark that in as c by the way, if we're looking for this point here where it's parallel to the initial line, then this is going to happen when y has reached a maximum value, a maximum positive value here. So we need to maximize this function. But at the moment we have got the variable r and we've got the variable theta. So what we can do is call upon our equation up here, which is that r equals 1 plus 2 cos theta. And if I just number that, say, equation 1, what we're going to do is sub 1 into here. So what we get then is that y must be equal to, well, I'm going to start with sine theta, but sine theta multiplied by r, r being 1 plus 2 cos theta. So now I've got y expressed in one variable here, theta. So I should be able to differentiate this with respect to theta. But before I do that, let's just expand the bracket so we get sine theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta. Now, we should recognize this second term here is the double angle identity for sine 2 theta. So I can write this then as sine of 2 theta. 
Now I've got that far, I should be able to just differentiate this in the usual way, dy by d theta. Differential of sine theta is cos theta, and the differential of sine 2 theta is plus 2 cos 2 theta. Now what I know that at p, we would expect y to be a maximum. In other words, the rate of change of y with respect to theta should in fact be zero at that point, at that maximum point. So at p, we know that dy by d theta must equal zero. So therefore, if we put our equation to zero, we've got cos theta plus two cos two theta must equal zero. So it's just a question of solving this equation. And what I would want to do is use the identity, the double angle identity for cos 2 theta. So what we've got so far is cos theta plus, and I'm going to pick on the identity that it's 2 cos squared theta minus 1, okay, for cos 2 theta. And this would equal 0. So what we've got here, if I expand this, is a quadratic equation in cos theta. We end up with 4 cos squared theta plus cos theta minus 2 equals 0. Now this doesn't factorise, so we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So it'll be cos theta equals minus b, so it's going to be minus 1, plus or minus the square root then of b squared, so that's 1 squared, minus 4 times a, which is the 4 here, times c, minus 2, and all of this is divided by 2 times a, 2 times 4. And if you work this out, what you find you get is the negative 1 here, and then you get plus or minus the square root of 33, and this is all divided by 8. Now, we're given that theta lies between naught and pi upon 2 radians. And if that's the case, then the cosine of theta must be a positive value. And for this to be a positive value, I've got to take the plus root 33 and then the minus 1. So we'll just write this down here that since theta lies between naught and pi upon 2 radians, it follows from this that cos theta must be equal to the minus 1 plus root 33. I'm just going to write that as root 33 minus 1 though, and it's divided by 8. Okay, this will give me a positive value. Now all I need to do now is just substitute the value of cos theta back into equation 1. It will give me r, and that will represent the length op. So if we just say sub in 1, sub in 1, then what we have got is that op now equals 1, okay, plus 2 times cos theta, so plus 2 times root 3, 33 I should say, minus 1, divided by 8. And if we simplify this, it comes out at 1 quarter multiplied by 3 plus root 33.